Well, look, as everybody knows, there is a Jobs and Skills Summit taking place in Canberra tomorrow at a time when worker shortages are at a critical level. That is hard to believe, I must say, when there are 892,000 Australians receiving job seeker and youth allowance payments. The interesting point about this is that fewer than 10% of private sector workers belong to a trade union, but 25% of those attending tomorrow will be union representatives. 25% business, 15% academics. Are they the people who pontificate in theory rather than in practice? 12% of those attending will represent lobby groups. Well, Innes Willocks has been a journalist, a political staffer and a diplomat, eminently well suited to be the chief executive of the Australian Industry Group for the last 10 years. So he represents businesses in a broad range of sectors, manufacturing, construction, transport and labour hire. I must say his only weakness is he was born in the port city of Aberdeen in the northeast of Scotland, 93 miles from Edinburgh, but we love our Scottish friends. So Innes joins us tonight. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Don't hold it against me, please, please. <laughs> um, what do you think all this is going to achieve and all those businesses with massive staff shortages are wondering when they're likely to gain relief and how? What are your thoughts? Well, Alan, tomorrow and part of Friday are an attempt to get different parts of the economy together to at least start conversations around some of those issues that you referred to. The number one issue that businesses talk about is labour shortages just can't get staff. So how do we get more people into the country? We might get some agreements around getting migration going, particularly skilled migration, to fill some of the gaps in the short term, but also some longer term needs that we have. We'll have some conversations around the big skills gaps we have but and, and a range of other issues, workplace relations and the like. But this is another marker or another step in a long conversation uh, around some of these issues that have been a long time coming. Mm. You know, we genuinely hope we can get some agreement on some of these issues, but some issues might be a bridge too far and some will need to be taken away for further discussion. So it's a step on the road. It's not going to answer all the problems we have, uh, but it's better to be, to be talking than not, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I guess. And it's the reason I have concerns about this is that I don't get any indication from government that things have changed since all this extravagant rhetoric about, for example, net zero took root. Now, the world faces affordable energy shortages. You know this, critical fuel shortages, trade bans, food shortages, economic downturns. Europe has, well, they've seen the consequences of this overly hastily withdrawal from fossil fuels and nuclear energy, the inability of renewable energy to provide reliable power. Yet here we are a world leader in natural resources and we're facing high petrol prices, rocketing inflation, coal-fired power stations aging and failing because they've been demonised and there's no incentive to invest in new heli coal-fired power plants. So there's a likelihood of electricity brownouts and industry shutdowns. How much time will be given to these issues in the next two days because they all affect jobs and productivity? Oh, they sure do, Alan. They're crucial. You don't have a job if you don't have power. Uh, and you know, all of industry relies on reliable, affordable power. It's becoming harder. We're seeing gas prices you know, triple uh, in recent times. You mentioned Europe. You know, they're going through hell at the moment. Yeah. A lot of Australian businesses are about to be catapulted into a period of paying enormous amounts more for their energy. Households the same, leading to inflation. We see estimates of the UK, Britain, you know, where I was born, inflation at 22% estimates of that. I mean, that's unsustainable.